raising the IQ and bank rolls of sports bettors everywhere. The Better IQ Podcast is your source for sports betting information, analysis, and opinions. Learn, bet, win. Better IQ. Good afternoon and welcome to the Better IQ Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lang. It's Wednesday and that means two things. Number one, it always means a big NBA card. That's going to be the topic here for this afternoon. And also, it means $5 daily plays is every selection going for Wednesday. You got college football bowl games, you got NBA, you got college hoops, every play uh, discounted to just five dollars, uh, plenty to choose from, and you can get as many as you want. Be sure to check out that buy picks page at uh, betteriq.com. It's on the uh, front page. Click on buy picks, and you'll see all of the options a plethora of five dollar selections, including uh, one of which. Uh, from our guest here for today, he comes in with the NBA, actually two. He's got a, a selection on the bowl, the Frisco Bowl here for tonight, and one in the NBA. You can get those each for uh, $5. Uh, let's welcome in our guest, Aaron Rennie. ER, how are you this afternoon? Oh, I'm doing good. As you mentioned, uh, got a couple of plays up here for tonight. Looking forward to uh, get on the winning track here, Andrew. Huge NBA card tonight. Seems like one of the bigger NBA cards. Some key games we'll be talking about. Uh, some of those, I know the NBA is going to be a little bit choppy here the next week, of course, with the Christmas holiday coming up. So big card tonight, and then just two games uh, tomorrow night, but kind of a rare. I know Sunday's NBA card is big. Obviously, Monday, uh, there's no games this week for Christmas Eve and then the usual Christmas slate. So going to be a little bit choppy, but a pretty steady card here. I know college basketball for you, Andrew, has been um, not as much going on, picking up a little bit now. And of course, um, uh, after the holidays, it'll be, uh, the, uh, the big time focus here. So anyway, uh, let's see if we can talk about, uh, some of these, car- uh, some of these games on the NBA card tonight. Per usual, Aaron, it's uh, a big NBA card, which means a big amount of questionable statuses, injuries. We'll start first with uh, Indiana as they head to uh, Toronto. Looks like Lowry out, hence the uh, line move. Er, uh, no one does it better in terms of uh, you know how much uh, a player is worth to the point spread, and more importantly, the uh, total. We saw Toronto open eight and a half, Lowry out now five across the uh, board. Uh, the total, however, not a big move, 211 down to 210, 209 and a half. What are your thoughts? Uh, yes, I mean, that's been the tricky aspect of the NBA NBA here recently because it seems like just about everybody is questionable, and if they're not questionable, no big deal if we scratch them 20 minutes before the game uh, as well. And Toronto games have been probably maybe a little bit more dicey uh, than anybody because we know uh, Kawhi Leonard's been in and out of the lineup for this team. Uh, last week they use they lose center uh, Valachunas. He's out four to six weeks with a dislocated thumb. Serge Ibaka also out for this team here tonight. As you mentioned, Kyle Lowry downgraded to out uh, this morning uh, at 8.05 Pacific. So uh, that's okay. I mean, I'm always fine with uh, guys being scratched, uh, know how to adjust and stuff like that. Makes it a little bit tougher from a service perspective um, because, you know, even the other night had a big 20-star winner uh, with the New York Knicks Phoenix Suns uh, over the total and uh, Hardaway was scratched for the Knicks half hour before the game, which was frustrating. Didn't matter uh, in the end, but uh, we'll move forward here to the game here tonight. Indiana uh, had recently been on a very good winning streak here. Uh, they had actually won uh, seven straight games, had covered uh, five of those seven before it all came to a screeching halt last night somehow against the Cleveland Cavaliers. They only scored 91 points last night against Cleveland. They lose 92 to 91. Uh, you know, kind of typical Nate McMillan stuff, Andrew. We've, um, for the coach for Indiana, Talked about playing more tempo, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And right now they have gone under the total in 10 or 11 straight games uh, for the Indiana Pacers. Uh, A lot of that has been due uh, to their defense, but uh, the pace hasn't been all that fast. But look at the uh, points against uh, for the Pacers, 92, 99, 101, 97, 101, 97, 90, 90. 
don't see that often uh, in this day and age in the NBA, but it has been uh, for the Indiana Pacers. Oladipo uh, back in the fold. I was a little bit concerned uh, that he could have been scratched here tonight as well, obviously coming back from the knee. Uh, uh, back-to-back situation that traveled to Toronto. So we'll see. I mean, there has been no reports, uh, but I was concerned that that could be the case. Meanwhile, the Raptors coming home from a Western Conference road trip against the Clippers, Golden State, Portland, and Denver. Started off good uh, with huge wins against the Clippers and Golden State, but what goes up must come down, and uh, they get beat on the road their next two games against Portland uh, and Denver. Um, allowing a ton of points and then not scoring many in that game against Denver. So interesting, you know, Lowry hadn't played at a super high level all season long, and then all of a sudden Leonard was out uh, in those games against the Clippers and Golden State, and he absolutely went off. They seemed lost uh, without him the other night, scoring 86 points, but uh, their other backup point guard was out as well, so they should be able to replace him uh, fine. The number has come down a little bit, a little bit hesitant here. Uh, again, with the Indiana Pacers, and nothing's been announced, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. This total has kind of gone back and forth. Actually, uh, just played up a little bit now uh, as a lot of these totals have been adjusted. But uh, would lean here towards the Pacers uh, at this point. We'll see how uh, this line works out here in the next couple hours. Detroit there in uh, Minnesota, Aaron. Identical, four, or, I'm sorry, 14 and 14 for uh, Detroit, 14 and 16 uh, for the uh, T Wolves. T Wolves, no real movement on the uh, side. They open five and a half, five and a half the uh, prevailing uh, number. This total, however, seen some uh, significant money here on the under, 220 down to 216 and a half, Aaron. Yeah, the, um, the pace, or I'm sorry, the Pistons. Uh, have a hard time winning basketball games here of late. You know, they had played the easiest, one of the easier schedules in the NBA, and I guess it was a couple weeks ago where this schedule picked up, and they've had a hard time answering the bell from a win-loss perspective. And, you know, you can clearly see that, uh, you know, from a perspective you look at them. And, you know, again, it's a mediocre team. It's an Eastern Conference good type of team. But right now uh, they have... Uh, won just one of their last eight games. They've uh, only covered a couple of those, and those have been more recently uh, as the line has kind of adjusted to them. But you look, uh, starting on December 3rd, that game at home against Oklahoma City, but they had played Oklahoma City at Milwaukee, Philadelphia, New Orleans at Philadelphia, at Charlotte, Boston, and Milwaukee uh, at Minnesota tonight. So still uh, pretty tough for this Detroit team. They got beat the other night against the Milwaukee Bucks. Blake Griffin said he did not play well at all in that game. I would expect him to come out and play much better in this matchup. For Minnesota, uh, boy, they had played so poorly uh, on the road at Portland, Golden State, Sacramento, and Phoenix. Uh, They lose all four of those games, just one and three against the spread, and then they fired a great game uh, off uh, the other night at home against Sacramento. They win 132-105. to Uh, certainly some sort of home road dichotomy uh, for this Minnesota team. I think the best way uh, to look and play this game uh, over the total, I would expect Blake to come back, uh, have a really good performance here. Uh, Jeff Teague is out for Minnesota, but Derek Rose, have to give him credit. Uh, He's still not going to be that good of a defensive player, but he's been in the starting lineup. The pace was good uh, the other night, and certainly – uh, his offense, he's shooting really well from the three-point line, which uh, you don't expect from Derrick Rose. So we'll see if that can continue. But uh, I do lean to this one going over the total tonight. Pelicans, they're in uh, Milwaukee. Bucks taking money, six up to uh, eight and a half. I see a handful of uh, nines out there, Aaron. I know uh, you had a play the other day on uh, Miami against uh, New Orleans, and uh, we're getting a couple of points with the Heat and didn't need them as the uh, Heat won outright. Uh, what's the play here? Again, Milwaukee, eight and a half, nine, a uh, total of 231 and a half. Yeah, another game where injuries, you know, Melvin Brock, Brock, Malcolm Brockton had missed the last couple of games with a hamstring. They announced him in the lineup at 11 a.m. Uh, this morning. Uh, New Orleans so depth shy uh, to begin with, and uh, Miratic has been out uh, for this team. They're trying to get him right, but Julius Randle uh, also now doubtful uh, for him. So his backup, and he'd been a worthy backup, uh, but take him out of the fold. Uh, just not a lot of depth here 
for this New Orleans team. You're seeing that in the number. Uh, as you mentioned, the Bucks sped up all the way to nine uh, in this game. Interesting matchup, obviously, with Davis and Takumpo. See if those guys guard each other uh, at all uh, in this game. Um, but, you know, New Orleans been kind of a funny team because, I, you know, they had alternated wins and losses, but now 15 and 16, 14 and 7 uh, against the spread. Been more of a team that uh, I've kind of bet against, but it is uh, kind of crazy right now. This team has been um, basically from a spread perspective and a straight-up perspective, they've been winning and losing every other game. You mentioned that game the other night against Miami. They lose, so we'll see if they fire back. Probably wouldn't want to bet against this team right now at a nine-point underdog, obviously, Western Conference uh, getting nine against the Eastern Conference. Uh, the Bucks off a three-game road trip. Um, had been playing better uh, basketball. The defense has been good for this team as well. They've allowed 104, 102, 113 to Indiana. Uh, Oladipo's first game back. Uh, Cleveland 92 and Toronto 99. So the defense has been good uh, for this Bucks team. It's been a little bit hit and miss offensively. They had not shot the three-point line from the three-point line all that well. Uh, Giannis was held down. Uh, in a couple of games. We'll see how they fire back here tonight. Uh, Wood lean slightly over the total. Very concerned, though, with the uh, the Pelicans' uh, injury situation. Hey, don't forget a better IQ for today. All daily plays discounted just $5. You got bowl games, you got NBA, you got college uh, hoops. Pick up as many as you want. Plenty to choose from. Check out that Buy Picks page, uh, the front or the link. It's on the uh, front page of betteriq.com. Uh, couple more games here, Aaron. Let's talk uh, Golden State as they head to uh, Utah. Warriors open three, now down to two and a half. In fact, there's some twos out there, 221 and a half the total. Yeah, boy, great matchup here between these two teams. Uh, Golden State trying to get on the right side of the equation here. They've now won two games in a row. Uh, they go into Sacramento and win the other night. Big win against Memphis. Conley did sit out uh, in that contest. Pretty much everybody back in the fold here for the Warriors um, as they make, uh, again, uh, trying to play their better basketball of the season. Uh, and, you know, kind of a good game to watch here because both these teams are at full strength uh, for this matchup. We've seen this over get hit up uh, a little bit here as well. You know, interesting to watch uh, in this matchup. Uh, Rudy Gobert, obviously so valuable. Uh, for this Utah team, especially from a defensive perspective. Uh, against a team like Golden State, where they can bring him kind of outside with their shooting and with their small ball lineup, uh, it has kind of bothered uh, a, a team like Utah. And they've had trouble adjusting at times uh, this year. You know, it just hasn't been kind of jazz-like uh, when they've allowed 115, 120, 125 in some of these games. So, uh, look forward to that matchup, how they're going to kind of counter here. I think that's one of the reasons uh, why we do get some play up uh, on this total. Obviously, Golden State, uh, all their guns are blazing for this matchup. And Utah is still played with some pretty good pace. The defense hasn't quite been there. Uh, really good matchup here, but not surprised to see a little bit uh, get hit with this total on this one. Last game, and uh, should be an entertaining one, is the Thunder. Uh, they head to uh, Sacramento, taking on the uh, Kings. Thunder taking money. Uh, another game with uh, some key injuries, Aaron. What's the uh, scoop? OKC open three and a half, now up to five and a half, 234 and a half the total. You know, the Thunder had been in pretty good, uh, had really hadn't been injured that much so far uh, this year. And uh, with Sacramento, uh, kind of a key injury for them, Bogdanovich. Uh, the young rookie, or not rookie, but the young sharpshooter uh, for this team. He's questionable. I kind of doubt uh, he's going to play. We'll see how it works out. But interesting game for the Kings the other night. They had not been good in back-to-back -back situations. They go into Dallas and win. And then on, I guess, Monday night, they go into Minnesota. I mean, they just were non-competitive uh, right out of the gate. And their head coach, Jaeger, uh, pretty much sat the whole starting lineup. They got outscored 38 to 23 in the first quarter, 36 to 21 in the second quarter. So it was essentially what 72 to 44 at half. But um, Paulie Stein played seven minutes. Uh, Bajelica played five minutes. The the key uh, young point guard Fox uh, played just six minutes in that game. 
Uh, even uh, Buddy Heal didn't play that much. So uh, basically they almost used it for a rest game. And kind of interesting to see how that worked out, but they did not play well. I would expect this team to fire back. They've been competitive, and they've been up to the task all season long. So somewhat of an embarrassing loss the other night against Minnesota, uh, matched up against this Oklahoma City team. So I'm interested uh, to see how uh, well they're going to fire back for this game. Um, you know, I talked to you a little bit off air. Oklahoma City. Uh, kind of one going away against the Chicago Bulls. We know the Bulls are a bit down uh, to begin with. Um, Oklahoma City before that had beat uh, the L.A. Clippers 110-104. to uh, The Clippers not playing their best basketball. Uh, Lou Williams out uh, for them as well. So the schedule is kind of played out uh, for this team those last couple of games. Seems like a little bit too much here. Uh, the Thunder bet all the way up uh, to five and a half. You know, this Sacramento team has been very game and been very competitive, uh, especially on their home floor. Off that bad loss, I would expect them to fire back uh, and even have a chance to uh, win this game here tonight. Great stuff here from uh, Aaron Renning. Again, a $5 daily plays. ER's got NBA. He's got college football. Eddie's got college football. Plenty of uh, college uh, hoops. Doesn't matter who the handicapper is or what the uh, sport. If your play's going on Wednesday, uh, you can get it for just uh, $5 exclusively at Better IQ. If you're new to us, you want to sign up an account, real easy to do. Upper right hand corner. Any questions, call us 1 866 923 8867 or drop us an email support at betteriq.com. Okay, that'll wrap up the show. Thank you for listening. We'll be back wrapping up the college football bowl card tomorrow uh, with Eddie Walls.